Hey guys, welcome back to Emmy Trips. Today I'm going to be showing you how to level up your model making. Uh, any entity you make uh, after this video uh, can be significantly cooler, uh, different. You can make many more packs. You will be able to do a lot of cool stuff. Uh, first, some examples. What we're going to be learning here is how to change your entity models uh, depending on a bunch of variables. There's a, there's a shit ton of stuff you can actually ch uh, change um, your entity models to. And I'm not talking about random mobs, properties files. These are SEM animations, uh, custom entity model animations. Uh, my example here for you is my chickens in the nether. They're obviously very funny. Uh, if you light them on fire, come on, almost. There you go, and he turns brown. You can barely see it because it's, I guess the brown shade uh, versus the red he turns when he's taking damage and the fire in there makes it kind of a, a subtle feature. There's another variant that uses this technique. It's a gas as a piglin uh, war machine. Uh, it has a little piglin baby on top and the piglin baby uh, is primed to change as soon as the gas enters lava. There you go, you saw it right there. It's, it's a quick change, but is in lava is uh, is one of those states that you can uh, you can change your model uh, according to. So how does it work? Well, I've opened my chicken model. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna make your own model. And if you press the little arrow, you're gonna open up uh, the SEM animations. You need to put them in, in a folder. It, it doesn't matter which folder. Basically, this is the code that makes the magic happen. We can even play uh, the, the animation in block range. It's, it's gonna tilt it for some reason but whatever, who gives a fuck. And then if we check this box right here, it's burning, it'll change uh, accordingly. And then if we uncheck it, it'll instantly uh, change back. And we can even make it so it doesn't instantly change back, right? Looking at my code, you won't need to write more than this, all right? It's relatively simple. You can even copy paste it from my pack and then change it accordingly uh, to your needs. Uh, this is uh, the line that does it basically. Uh, uh, well, all these lines, I guess. But this is the variable we're gonna be writing, for cooking, right? And you can change cooking for whatever you want. I just named it cooking because obviously it's cooking. And then this in between the quotation marks is the condition uh, that we can change our model to. So uh, it's right now it's is burning. If you delete this and you type is and then an underscore, you can already see a list of variables available. So you can change uh, your model depending on all of this shit, right? So I could have changed the, the burning texture to, uh, I don't know, is it ridden, for example, and then whenever the chicken was ridden, it would it would cook, which doesn't make much sense. But I'm just letting you know, this is really easy, right? And then I obviously went for is on fire, or I think is burning is the one, right? Yeah, there you go, is burning. And then these next two lines of code are actually what decides which body is there. So if we go open this body folder, you can see that I have two bodies, same for the legs. I have two sets of legs, uh, well, left leg, right leg, but then in there I have uh, raw and cooked, right? Same for the left leg, raw and cooked. And basically th these lines decide which one is gonna be active, right? Body raw is visible is if varp cooking isn't met, and body cooked is visible if a varp cooking is being met. See, there's two bodies in there at all times, and they won't load at all times because of this uh, little bit of code, right? And then this left leg raw and left leg cooked visible, etc., etc., is just a copy of the body's code. So this is really simple. This is basically all you need, and then this cooking can be anything as long as it matches up to this varp, right? There you go. You can now already do a lot more shit than you probably previously could uh, with your entity models. Pretty exciting stuff. I also did this for the eyes of my spider. I changed the system of my uh, spider eyes to where they will light up if the spider is aggressive. Uh, so let's go, just go into survive mode and hit the spider. Uh, and then when it goes aggro, its eyes will light up. It's really subtle, but maybe you can spot it if we go back to creative. And then it takes a while. Uh, see, it was an instant, like with the chickens. That was an instant transition, and this takes a while. And then if we look at my spider's code, you will see that it's the same thing again. It just has a lot more of those lines. I've also added a custom texture for spiders that has uh, legs that light up uh, if he spawns low enough. See, it's a reference to story mode. So that's why there's a lot of this. But basically, it's the same thing, right? Head aggro visible, except it is uh, a bit of a different uh, variable. It's now var glowing eyes, not var, and it has a little bit more code to it. This line right here basically starts a timer of uh, 10 ticks or 10 seconds or whatever. Uh, so you can also change this number if you want a different time. And it's gonna wait until that time is over to put the regular spider head back in, right? If you do this code like this. And let's disable is aggressive on the left here. And now if we wait a little bit, the spider should uh, eventually go back to its normal face. There you go. And, and if we change this number too, I mean, it's hard, hard to showcase because I'm not gonna sit here for 20 fucking seconds uh, if, if I did, if I changed it to 20, for example. But you get the point, right? If you change this to a higher number, it's gonna wait longer time uh, before putting in the regular head again. Head chill in this case. And this is just like a tiny bit of code. Uh, you can download my pack or I'll put the little lines of code in the description so you can just copy it and paste it into block with yourself. One little technique I want to uh, include into the video that'll uh, top off this feature for you uh, and that'll leave you very powerful uh, ready to create a bunch of cool shit is that with some animation it's also possible to just reference another limbs code so in this case i've added a right arm and a left arm to the phantom which obviously doesn't have arm bones naturally so they wouldn't animate but what i did is i linked them up to the animations of the right wing which means that it will naturally sway right obviously because the wing just the wing goes like this it's a wing and then linking it to the right wing animation 
uh, we'll just make it gently sway, which is a really powerful feature because you can just make a really simple animation. So, uh, you can just create a new limb, create a new folder that has no animations. And without knowing how to animate, just link it up to an already existing animation within the mob. You have to link it to a limb that already exists in the mob. Let's say that you want uh, to make the body sway. Like I've actually done that for my texture pack. You probably want to put the head inside of the body so it sways on, on one thing. So that now if the body sways, uh, the entire thing sways instead of the head being separate. I've removed the head from this folder. The head folder is now empty and the head cube is now inside head two, which isn't animated because the animations come naturally to the creeper, only to the head folder, but I can make head two have the same animations as head one, right? So you just start off right like this. Uh, I'm, I, I like pasting my code. I, I almost never write new code. I'm gonna put head two first because we're applying the animations to this folder. And then I'm just gonna put head here. This Z here or this X here, uh, I'm actually gonna change it to an X so it matches up, uh, is the axis, right? So you can actually see that by going to the rotate tool. And then this is a green one and right here it says Y. So that's the Y axis, right? So we also want it to rotate like this because the head also rotates on the Y axis. A head doesn't rotate on these axis. I had never rotate on the z-axis, but it does uh, rotate on the x-axis and the y-axis, right? So we want the x-axis of head to, uh, to match the x-axis of head. And this is how we write it. And then if we want another line, we have to add a comma and then paste it and make sure you never end with a comma. Your final line should never have a comma, right? And then I'm gonna change the axis to the y-axis and same for the axis here. We should now have put all the animations of the regular head in the head two folder. So now your head two will look around in game uh, the same way that a creeper would naturally. And this is a great example of how, uh, how much powerful shit you can do with this simple technique, right? I'm gonna make a new folder and actually I'm gonna put uh, the, the body and head to uh, in this new folder and I'll call it body uh, bobbing. And now I want the uh, pivot point, which is the point that it uh, angles at, right? I'm gonna put it at the legs, right? Nice and low. And then I'm gonna copy this code again, paste it in, make sure my commas are correct. And I'm gonna say body bobbing, uh, let's check which axis. Actually, it's the Z axis, it's the blue one. And I want it to bob like this. That's the blue lines and blue is Z, right? So I'm gonna say uh, body bobbing dot RZ. Give it the animations of leg one on the X axis, right? And this will still apply it on the z-axis of the body bobbing folder but it will take the animation from the x uh, axis, which is for legs, it's how they move, right? Legs move on the uh, X axis, which is the red one, right? So linking body bobbing RZ uh, to leg one RX should make our creeper bob. And let's check it out in game because I've had this feature in my pack uh, for a while and it does work. We're going to survival mode and see he's gonna uh, run towards this and he's gonna bob uh, just ever so slightly. See he bobs uh, like a little bit and that's done without me animating anything. I've just linked the animations uh, of, of the that body bobbing file uh, folder uh, to the legs, uh, which, which works perfectly. And the same goes for my uh, phantom variant it works perfectly. See, the, well, I spawn him low. Phantoms always look shit when you spawn him low in the world. But let's see if he goes higher up if I miss a Yeah, he does. See, his his, his uh, arms and legs sway a little bit, and that's again just copying uh, the, the the wings animations and then slowing them down uh, quite a bit because wings obviously move a bit faster than you want limbs to move. How you slow them down, by the way, uh, you've probably already seen me do it. Uh, you add a little slash. Uh, and then a number, like this divides it by uh, two basically. You have to try it out for yourself. Uh, just try different numbers, uh, see different results. And if you want to multiply the animation to make it go faster, uh, further, do this, like uh, one of those little stars, right? That will uh, make the animation uh, twice as fast. That multiplies it, right? And this divides it, all right? Keep in mind that if you animate uh, a, a folder that it loses its rotations in game, you can re-add those rotations though uh, by adding this little line to your code. It is uh, two red uh, and then in brackets, you put the degrees that you want it to turn and then you just include it in the animation of the right folder on the right axis that you want and then when my animation is loaded it'll also uh, turn it uh, in this case 35 degrees which is perfect in the case of the tail because that's what it needs uh, to look like my tail if i remove the, the two red bits uh, and I start the animation now, uh, it's gonna have a tail that's like weirdly animated, like pu punching upwards almost. And then if we uh, re-add the two red uh, parts, it's gonna be uh, more forward. You see it? Now it's really pinching forwards. The animations of my scorpion are made by Yuan Howell. Uh, and for that matter, Yuan Howell has taught me everything I know basically about pack making. So shout out to Yuan Howell. If you want to know more about OptiFence features, uh, Yuan Howell also has a lot of tutorials on his channel and they're really useful. Uh, I've used them myself, so go check him out as well. That's it. I think, right? Don't you know how to do basically everything now? Can't you now make models that change depending on any fucking variable? Basically, yeah, right? I mean, I I've been able to do that and I've been making some cool shit with it. Let me know what you make. Leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you like, uh, if you, you know, the way I the way I talk. Maybe, you know, I, I do a lot of types of videos. You should check out my other content and uh, show this video to your pack making friend. Uh, your pack making friend needs to see this, right? Because your pack making friend uh, needs to up his resource packing game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.